That is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Powell, thank you for being here. Let, let me start with uh, high prices. Uh, because not only in Nevada, but across the country, we're seeing high food, housing, and gas prices, which uh, really is creating a, a financial hardship for too many families. Um, and I want to start with gas prices first. In Nevada, uh, average price of gas is $5.60. In Las Vegas, about five sixty. dollars in, in Reno, at $6 uh, a gallon. And as gas prices rise across the country, Oil and gas companies, we know, are making record profits, but are using that money to continue to consolidate their industry and pay for stock buybacks instead of investing in increased oil production. Uh, on one of them, and one I've heard is over 9,000 permits that they have that are unused drilling permits, um, or they're not expanding their refining capacity. We also know that reduced refining capacity is a particular problem that has been caused in large part by decades of oil industry consolidation and is driving gas price hikes to be as much as 61 cents a gallon higher than expected. So when considering the drivers of inflation, how much do Federal Reserve economists consider consolidation in an industry? And what else can we do to hold these industries accountable for their, con their contributions to rising prices? You know, we're, so those are really questions for the competition authorities, questions of industry structure and consolidation, they really aren't uh, questions that we directly address. You know, we raise interest rates, and our job is maximum employment. But, but, but I have to push back. You have to consider that. I mean, you're considering what's happening in Ukraine as a variable on inflation and high prices. So you have to consider the fact that we have these oil companies. They are exclusively control this commodity that is key for, for this country. We know that not only do they produce and decide how and when they're going to drill crude oil, we also know the refineries, and quite honestly, the refineries in this country are not prepared to refine the domestic oil that even comes from Texas and the Dakotas. The refineries are prepared uh, to refine the oil that comes uh, from out of this country. And we also know that many of the oil companies have their own traders that are trading on the price of crude oil in this country. I mean, listen, you, you just talked about an outside agency. Uh, and this is why this is so important and why I, I am a co-sponsor of the Transportation Fuel Market Transparency Act. Glencore was just fined $1.1 billion because they were manipulating uh, the fuel oil, oil prices to their benefit. So that is something you have to take into consideration when we have an industry like these gas and oil companies that are so consolidated, they are having an impact on the prices to the detriment of the people in my state. So that has to be something you consider and take into consideration when you're looking at the impact that people across the country are, are seeing from these high prices. I hope it is. Please tell me you are. Well, I, th I think we see that the global oil prices, which have you know, very important effects on, on gas prices here at home, are set on the global market, and that, as we mentioned earlier, there's a there's a large cartel that is responsible to a significant extent for setting those prices. We take that as given. So, do you pay attention to what what is Wall Street is saying and what these cartels are doing? When you say cartels, these are these big oil companies, and they're indicating that well, I'm not going to drill because I'm making profits because the price of gas is so high. So, uh, you would assume, uh, I would as uh, hope that you would take that into consideration that it's going to continue these high prices because uh, there is a challenge in holding these oil companies accountable. So we, we, in principle, we pay attention to anything that could affect the, the use of our tools and the need to use our tools. And I think with, with, uh, uh, you know, with the future price of oil, uh, the, the, best, the best thing you can probably do is look at oil futures because that futures, in, in theory, should be taking into account, taking into account all of these factors, and that's what we do. But ultimately, the question for us is, do we raise or lower interest rates? We don't have tools that would address these, these practices that you're discussing. They're not really, of course, we, we understand them. Well, do you have matter. concerns that these oil companies are manipulating or controlling the prices that we have right now? Does that, do you take that into consideration in, with the tools that you need to uh, reduce inflation and reduce these costs? Honestly, the, those are not judgments for us to make. We're, you know, the questions about industry structure and competition are really not, it's not our assignment. Our assignment but is the outcome, employment and price the, stability. The outcome of that infrastructure is something you've got to take into consideration. Yes, very Unless much. they change, the prices are not coming down. 
unless they stop giving profits and sharing that with their shareholders and start addressing and looking at actually the consumer at the other end of this who is bearing the brunt of it, these prices are not going to come down. I, I would assume you take that into consideration. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, when you say take it into consideration, we, we, we do have to have a, a forecast of oil prices, and we do. But um, ultimately, though, the question for us is, is price inflation, what's happening with price inflation? And it's a macroeconomic question. It's not a question about industry structure or corporate behavior. It's a question about what will be the behavior of inflation across the economy. And in particular, we don't, we, we, there's really not anything that we can do about oil prices. There's a little, you know, food prices is, is a bit more mixed, but for oil prices, they're set at the global level. It has to do with, with global oil prices and also refining, the refining spread. Neither of these are things that we have the tools to affect. Does it concern you that these oil companies haven't come to the table to look for a solution to help us reduce, I, honestly, reduce fuel I, costs? Honestly, I, I don't think it's appropriate for, for the Fed or for me to be reaching out into areas of policy that are not assigned to us. I, it's, it's not up to us to comment on, on that sort of thing. We, we have a very specific job and, and precious independence to, to carry that job out. And I think the other side of that is stick to that job. And our job is maximum employment and price stability. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My time is up.